here's the thing I found out. I found out that it really doesn't matter who causes it. If it's, if it's from God or if it's not from God, and, and I don't really know the difference sometimes, what I know is that through God, through, through it's kind of like his hands, whatever happens in our lives, it has to pass through his hands. So whether it came from his hand or whether it was from the enemy is not the most consequential thing. The most consequential thing is, will I partner with what God is doing even if it's not what I prefer? Or will I resist it? Or will I push against it? Or will I go with it? And so the Israelites are being set free from Pharaoh, and just about the time that freedom is in sight, just about the time that it looks like they're going to make it to this land flown with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanites and Perizzites and Hittites and Jebusites and Cellulites and all these enemies that we have to fight in this modern. It's, it's a real. That's a real enemy. That's a real enemy. The Cellulites. Some of y'all are fighting. You're fighting the the virus of of overeating right now, but. But listen to what happened when they got there. It's a serious moment, people. Y'all quit making light of the word of God. <laughs> Pharaoh changed his mind and said, What have we done? Now listen to this, verse 5. We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best. Chariots. The enemy uses the heaviest artillery on the people who are carrying the greatest purpose. Y'all won't shout. Y'all won't put a fire emoji in the chat. And so, if a lot is coming against you, that means God has put a lot in you. And one of the things that God is showing us in this season is what He put in us. And you know how He's doing that? By shutting down everything around us. Because sometimes the only way for you to see what is within you is that everything that is not within you. I put it like this When I preach to a crowd, I sometimes get carried by their energy. But when I'm preaching and there's only three people in the room, Alejandro on camera two, and Eric sitting there like he's doing a job, but he really just wanted to get away from his kids for a few minutes. Something different has to kick in. Something different has to kick in. And so we think a lot of the times, y'all stop with the fire emojis. Calm down for a minute. You're going to burn down the chat. But sometimes the Lord allows something around us to shut down, to die, so that something within us can come alive. And Pharaoh said, I changed my mind about letting them go. The message titled today is called A Lesson in Letting Go. A Lesson in Letting Go. And I just want you to put that right there in the comments. If you're watching this later on YouTube, just put this is a lesson in letting go because there's so much we're learning right now. We may not know we've learned it until way on the other side of it. You don't really realize life lessons until later. You know that, right? It's later that you say, oh, it was good for me that I was afflicted because this taught me that. Oh, it's good for me that they told me no because I didn't want to date them anyway. If I would have married them, I would be in therapy right now. And it's, it's, it's later that we see the lessons. A lot of times it's, it's later that we see the lessons. And now we can read about Exodus 14, you know, the children of Israel. Wow, they should have trusted God through the Red Sea and God was going to make a way. But it's easy to say that on the other side of it. It's so easy to look back and say, well, you know, he made a way where there was no way. But, you know, that's when you're looking back. What really takes faith is to look forward at something and to believe that he's going to make a way when you can't see it. A lesson in letting go. And God told Moses from the beginning that freedom is not going to come easy. Certain freedoms in our life have to be forced. 
That sounds bad, right? But it's true. The only way that God sets us free from certain things is he has to take them away. And sometimes what God allows to be removed from our life is just as important as what he allows to be brought into our life. And yet this is a season where a lot of us are having to learn to appreciate things. Remember, like I said last week, the things you were complaining about in February, you would be praising God for in April. All of the annoying people, you just wish you could have a different cast of characters than the four you're stuck inside with. And I figured out how much people are saying that they're finding a rhythm in quarantine is dependent on how big their house is. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, man, this is kind of cool. Or how grown their kids are. Or some people, it's do they have any human interaction? And so I've been thinking a little bit about the fact that a lot of times in my life, the lesson God is teaching me is to appreciate something. Here's what I want to ask you, and maybe you can answer it on chat. What is God teaching you to appreciate in this season? Very simple, but maybe worth some reflection. And I'm going to wait for you to respond. And you say, Well, God is teaching me to appreciate my livelihood, you know? Honestly, I had really gotten so caught up in what I didn't like about my job that I forgot the fact that having one is a blessing that I can't take for granted. Sometimes the only way that God gets us to appreciate something is to allow it to leave for a little while. That doesn't mean that this global pandemic is a plague sent by God, but I think God can use it to teach us to appreciate some things, don't you? I wish they would let us get back in this church and sing rattle. I wish they would. The first time, I'm telling you, the first time Elevation Church gets to come back and sing rattle in person, because I've been watching y'all online. Y'all are losing your minds online. When we get in a building and sing it, you better wear a motorcycle helmet. I wish they would let us get. I wish they would let us get back together, man. We're 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 gonna we're gonna really have a good time. But you know what? The very same thing that we long for today. It's something that we had been living in for so long that God is teaching me to appreciate some things. How about you? He's teaching me to appreciate some things that I had become so accustomed to, accustomed to, used to. You get used to the things that God gives you to the point that you can become used to the people that God gives you. You can get used to simple moments, things that used to be annoying you learn to appreciate, don't you? What is God teaching me to appreciate in this season? Isn't it interesting how the children of Israel, all they wanted to do was get out of Egypt, get out of Egypt, get out of Egypt, but when they went through the Red Sea into the wilderness, they wanted the food that they had in Egypt. It took leaving Egypt to really appreciate it. And now God was trying to bring them out of it. But there are some things that, that we need to appreciate, and we can only appreciate them in seasons sometimes where we don't quite have them in the same form anymore. Does that make sense? Because God is teaching me to appreciate some things. He's revealing things to me that I did not appreciate enough, like things I just took for granted, things I just thought would always be this way. And so one of the things that's happening in this season for all of us is God is not only teaching us to appreciate certain blessings, but he is resetting the baseline of what we consider a blessing. Can I preach, Lush? The Bible says, let everything that hath a new car praise the Lord. Let everything that hath perfect circumstance praise the Lord. Sorry, it's been a while. Maybe I'm rusty on the scriptures. Let everything that hath breath. So that's the new baseline for being grateful. That's the new baseline. Before God gives us a new blessing, he wants to give us a new baseline. Did you just breathe? Praise him. Are you still here? Praise him. Did he wake you up? Praise him. Did he sustain you? 
You might not like the taste of manna, but if you've got something to eat, praise him. You might not like who you're sitting next to on the couch, but praise him that you got somebody to sit next to. Grab that hand and squeeze it and say, if you've got a pulse, praise him. If you've got breath, if he gave you another day, why am I screaming there's nobody in the room? My new baseline to praise him is just, thank you for keeping me alive. You're all over me. You kept me in my right mind. I should be going crazy, but you did it anyway. In view of God's mercy, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I start with the fact that he kept me another day. I start with the fact that he did not owe me real estate today. I start with the fact that the boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places for me. He is my portion. He is my strength. He is my rock, and the storm can come, but it can't knock my house down. A new baseline for praise. And then he's not only teaching me to appreciate some things, and he's not only resetting some things, but he's teaching me to release some things. Uh huh. If you are a control freak and you want to stay that way, log off right now. If you are a control freak and you want to stay that way, you better search uh, uh, dance videos, cat videos in the YouTube box right now. And just get off this stream because right now I'm coming for every control freak because I is one. Y'all like my English? And God is homeschooling us right now. God is teaching me some things about release. Now, I promised you I'd give you this illustration because it comes back to my mind all the time. Now, Chris has been over. To the little workout room that we have at the house. I'm so thankful for that little workout room because I hide there for like six hours a day sometimes right now. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too proud to tell you. That's one of my secrets to survival right now. I'm not even lifting weights half the time. I'm not even lifting weights one tenth of the time. Makes me feel good to be around some dumbbells, though. And honestly, like certain sermon ideas come to me when my body is moving, and so I kind of try to incorporate the two. But um, I had this flashback the other day from when, I guess about three years ago, was it three years ago? My elbow started hurting all the time, and Chunk said that's called golfer's elbow. Now, he used to be a physical therapist, so I'm like, I know you went to school for this crap, but I've never played golf. So you're going to have to explain to me how I got golfer's elbow. I played golf twice in my life with my dad. After he had a six pack of beer, and neither time did we finish the nine holes because it went so bad. So I have never, ever in my life played golf as a grown man. So you explain to me how I have golfer's elbow. Is that right? Is it golfer's elbow? Yeah. I can never remember. It's tennis elbow and golfer's elbow, and one is one thing, one's the other. But the, the thing I want, wanted to say to you was my, my elbow hurt. And I told him that my elbow was hurting. Because I had been lifting too heavy. You know, isn't that a man's way of explaining things? Problem is, I've just been lifting too much weights. It's these 95 pound dumbbells. I've just been, been pushing myself too hard. And he said politely, because I pay him, right? So he has to say this a certain way. But he said, actually, it's not the amount of weight that caused the injury, it's not how much weight. You were lifting is how hard you were gripping it. I'm coming for the control freaks. I'm coming for the people who, even when you pray for your kids, you're not really praying, you're just giving God a punch list of ways to make them not in His image but yours. I'm coming for everybody who had a plan for this first part of the year. And now you, you can't really find your, your rhythm, you can't find your groove, and it's understandable and it's completely normal. But what Chunks told me, this is so powerful, and I'm gonna say it way better than he said it, okay? But this is how I heard it. I heard him say, You could lift a lot more if you will loosen your grip. You can lift a lot more 
How much time do y'all have today? God said, if you'll hold it differently, you can handle it. So, so, so here's what I'm noticing. If I take it day by day or hour by hour or moment by moment, I'm good. It's only when I get too far out or too far back. Either one is a mistake. I can handle Sunday on Sunday, but I can't handle Saturday on Sunday, and I can't handle Monday on Sunday. But this is the day. Somebody say, this is the day in the chat. This is the day that the Lord has made, forgetting what is behind. I can't fix that. I got a grip on something behind me, and I can't go toward what God has put in front of me. But I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. God said you can get there. If you let go, let go, let go, let go. Oh man, that preach is so good. Why is it so hard to do? Let go and let God. Uh huh. You gonna pay my light bill? No, but let go and let God. Well, God didn't offer me. God didn't offer me a rent check. I know, brother, but let go and let God. Okay, I don't think it's really about letting go of your responsibilities. I don't really think it's about what I think it's about releasing is the things you could never control to begin with. And all God is doing in some of our lives in this season is showing us how little control we had to begin with. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.